Greetings friends, Stu Jones here. I am super excited to be here with you today, Cyberpunk Day. So a big shout out to the creators for um, making this all possible and extending an invitation to me to uh, share a little bit of my work with you. Today I'm gonna read you a segment of an upcoming, as of yet unpublished novel titled The Zone. Up the covered stairs, Chance ran his wrist chip under the domed scandroid and trudged on to a platform littered with garbage and a handful of people with nowhere else to sleep. Dirty and unmoving, they lay under piles of trash in the deepening cool of night. Could be worse. I could be them, Chance thought. He checked his watch, 10.45 p.m. Another sigh escaped him. Got any feels? A bum sat up, regarding Chance with a purple-veined face, smelling of cheap wine. Or crystal? No, sir. I don't do drugs, Chance eyed the man. What about teas? The bum said. Nope. That's a fucking lie, the bum slurred. I know you got teas. Chance scowled, flicking his eyes at the man. With a whine, the train eased into the station. Behind him, colored graffiti twisted in ropey bands down the length of the segmented cars. What do you want me to say? Chance said. Of course I've got teas. Just none to spare. Get lost. You don't have to be an asshole about it, the bum grumbled. Yeah? Well, here's a tip. Panhandling 101. Don't insult the people you're begging from. It's bad form. Chance stepped onto the mostly empty train. The bum gave him the finger as the doors closed. Chance shook his head and found a seat. NTPD wasn't even running off the bums anymore. Not high enough on the list of priorities. The light rail shoved forward, picking up speed with an electric whine. Chance leaned back into the smooth plastic bench seat deep in thought. The clouded windows of the rail car streaked with droplets of rain and the massive breadth of his city opened up before him. Steam rose in hazy, hazy pillars above moldering buildings, run-down apartment towers, the bars, cafes, and clubs with their flashing video signs and holographic displays touting girls, guns, feels, and Sony's latest in cybernetic enhancements. Ahead, a giant billboard with digital exploding fireworks showcased a recent win by one of the zone's enforcers. A powerful woman in sleek purple and gold tactical armor marked by the call sign, Takedown. Chance gave a cynical chuckle. The opium of the masses. He scanned the fetid neon cityscape. A darkness, a murky desperation hung in the air. The atmosphere stale with poverty, oppression, and regret. Chance loved his city. It was all he'd ever known. But he'd grown weary, disillusioned by the sheer, unending squalor that wormed its way into every good thing. How is it possible to find hope in a place like this, he thought. One of the last bastions of civilization following the Great Collapse, Neo Terminus was built on the charred bones of a place called Atlanta. He hadn't lived through the fall, hadn't been born until much later, but he'd heard the stories. Depending on who you asked or consulted on the network, you always got a different answer. How a powerful country called the United States of America died. His grandfather once told him of the war that destroyed everything outside the city's walls how the cluster nukes streaked from the sky without warning and saw much of the civilized world reduced to gnarled craters of black glass. Nothing but wasteland and death remained out there beyond the walls. Then came the conglomerate. In an attempt to reignite a failed system, an alliance of some of the most powerful and influential corporations had poured the bulk of their resources into the last surviving cities, Manhattan, Atlanta, and Las Vegas. New York, Unable to sustain its already bloated infrastructure, fell with little delay to the ravenous fires of anarchy. In a matter of days, communications with the outside world went dark. Swollen to ten times their previous size, 
due to an unconstrained migration of refugees from across the country, the remaining cities restructured and reorganized into sectors. Las Vegas transformed into the glitzy desert frontier outpost, New West City. Atlanta into the bustling metropolis of Neo Terminus. In the process, the conglomerate dodged the rippling domino effect that crushed the rest of the world's economy, sending humanity back into the Dark Ages. And thus, the glom was born, and every person living inside the walls of the last cities knew whatever good things they still possessed were thanks to the founders. Still, good things were in short supply these days. Chance shifted the smooth plastic curve of the seat, causing a knot behind his shoulder blade to act up. His path home tonight would take him around the southern part of Neo Terminus, broken up by the old interstate system, the motor vehicle highways of old, crumbling and cluttered with abandoned junk, marked the end of one sector and the beginning of another. Hayseed, the Slags, Vulcan Heights, Havana Straits, Watertown, and Skyrise each comprised an outer sector of Neo Terminus. The hub of all big business in Neo Terminus, Silver City, sat at the center of it all. To the south of the glamorous business district, a cancerous black tumor with 60 foot walls festered in the heart of the city, the zone. The light rail slowed, sliding into the first Havana Strait stop with screeching of brakes. Outside the doors, young men with dyed green hair and matching emerald jackets laughed and passed a pipe, smoke curling from their lips. Hoodie boys. Damn, Chance murmured, sliding his back to the window and elbow checking the MVX pistol tucked in the small of his back. A surge of adrenaline burned away the lingering effects of alcohol in his system and brought his senses to a razor sharp focus. The doors to the train slid back. The hoodies bounded in, whooping and bumping forearms. Most of them clicked translucent visors across their eyes, upward onto their foreheads, lenses flickering with endless network content. Spreading out, they encircled chance, hanging on the grab rails or hopping up to stand on the seats around him, sadistic grins on their faces. With a whining sound, the door slid shut. A clunk followed, and the rail car eased from the station, picking up speed again. Looky, looky, boys, it's a late-night commuter, one of the hoodies said, laughing and leaning down over Chance. On my way home, fellas, Chance said. Uh-huh, the lead hoodie said, flashing a mouth of chrome-capped teeth. Well, you's riding my train. It's gonna goust ya. Chance angled his right shoulder away, turning his eyes down. The fingers of his hand grazed the grip of his MVX in his waistband. I don't want any trouble. Just going home, like I said. I'd appreciate it if you'd leave me to it. I don't think you understand, pretty boy. The hoodie leaned down closer, the smell of stale sweat reaching Chance's nostrils. You's riding my fucking trick. Chance lashed out, fingers closing on a handful of the goon's green hair. He gave a brutal downward jerk, and the man shrieked. He whipped the MVX from its holster and jammed it under the lead hoodie's chin. The train rattled to life as the other half-dozen hoodies around him brandished knives, short clubs, and snarled curses. You don't read between the lines so good, Chance said, inches below the lead hoodie's face. You've got the wrong guy. The lead hoodie turned his eyes down, seeing for the first time the silver glint of the badge hanging inside Chance's half-zip jacket. Little pig, little pig, the lead hoodie said, his voice dripping with menace. You can't drop us all with your epistola. You know you can't. We'll cut your fucking guts out. They might. Chance said, forcing the barrel of the MVX harder up under the man's chin. But you won't. Everyone stood frozen. Even though the train squealed on, the plastic curve of the seat shifting and jostling under Chance. Outside the windows, the dark, glittering landscape passed in a blurred streak of neon and black. A crooked snarl sp spread across the lead hoodie's face. You know what? 
I think we've got a misunderstanding here, boys, he said. We'll find another one. The train slowed for the second Havana straight stop. Chance's fingers still clenched in the lead hoodie's greasy green hair. Chance darted his eyes back and forth, sizing up each man. We good or what, pig? The lead hoodie said. The doors opened as the train came to a complete stop. Yeah, Chance released the hoodie and shoved him back, angling the MVX at the group. We good. Now get off my train, and if I see you again, I'll shoot your dumb asses. Sure thing, officer, the lead hoodie backed up, his eyes wild. He gave a flick of his head, and his boys exited the train, muttering threats. You be safe out there now, he winked, his voice syrupy sweet. Bad things happen to little piggies all the time. Chance sat where he was, his MVX leveled at the man's chest, until the doors hissed closed. His shoulders slumped, his back aching from muscles clenched too long. He made his way to his feet and pulled on his neck with a curse, reholstering the MVX pistol. He stood there in silence as the minutes passed and his body swayed to the rhythm of the shifting train. He considered how close he'd come all day long to his wife getting a notification from a uniform, hat in hand. The lights of the train flickered as it slid into the station of Watertown. Chance stepped out onto the platform. The city was quieter here, the air thick with damp, musky scents. It only took Chance a few minutes to navigate the three blocks along the elevated boardwalk stretching from one end of Watertown to the other. Below the boards at his feet, the street-level remains of the old city stared back from beneath dark green water that lapped a greasy film against the pylons. A group of Asian teens laughed, raking their arms through the air, visors flashing as they collected virtual loot in an augmented reality. Chance continued with a weary sigh, drawn along by the soft glow and gentle sway of Chinese lanterns. He shook his head to break the spell and hooked left onto Stonewall Court. At the entrance to his apartment tower, he swiped his palm over the panel next to the slick metal door. The lock slid back with a shunk, the door easing open. Chance paused and eyed the junkies across the way, visors ready on their foreheads, shooting up a dose of fields, probably laced with gutter crystal. He stepped inside the landing, the door shutting behind him. Eight flights of stairs and a left turn found Chance in front of his place only a little winded from the climb. Some of the higher-end apartment buildings in Watertown had lifts. Stonewall Terraces wasn't one of those places. He listened at the sustained sounds of furniture thrown against the walls. Neighbors fighting again. Not his problem. Chance rubbed his face and stared at his own door. He hoped Hannah was asleep. He didn't feel like having the conversation that was sure to come. Chance waved the RFID chip in his wrist over the black plate next to his door. Good evening, the monotone voice said. Voice identification, please. Chance Griffin, he murmured, leaning against the frame. A small chime pipped, and there was a click. Welcome home, Mr. Griffin. Your suite of Google services is ready for you to enjoy. Chance pushed the door open and slid through the narrow gap. The air was warm and pleasantly scented, the flickering of a spiced candle on the table, the only light aside from the soft yellow glow from the baby's room. The place was small but clean and well-kept, and he knew he had Hannah to thank for that. With great care, Chance pushed the door shut, and the three-stage elect electronic deadbolt clicked into place. There, on the warm couch, curled up under a pile of blankets, lay his wife, her visor still down over closed eyes. He tabbed the button on the visor stem above her ear, and the show she'd been watching went dark. Careful not to wake her, he slid her visor off and placed it on the small table next to her elbow. Eyeing the woman he'd pledged his undying devotion to over six years ago, he noted her tousled blonde hair strewn across the couch pillow and smirked at how it managed to be perfect, even now. 
To him, she was the most beautiful woman in the world, but a tiredness seemed to encase her as she slept. Was that there before? Did I do that to her? Taking one last look, he walked to the cramped bedroom where his infant son slept. Inside, kept closy by a, a slow spinning holographic display of circus animals, his son slept beneath a jumble of soft blankets. Chance leaned over the crib to listen for the boy's breath. Satisfied, he straightened, gripping the tiny blanket with two fingers and drawing it up about the infant's curled form. Chance resisted the urge to feel the small warmth of his son in his arms. He knew better than to wake him. Hey, a groggy voice whispered behind him. Chance didn't turn as he felt Hannah's arms encircle his midsection. Hey, he said. You okay? Hannah said, leaning her head against his shoulder blade. Chance gave a grunt and rechecked his son's blankets. Look at me, Hannah said, turning him. You been drinking? Yeah, Chance said. With Benny? You couldn't have messaged? I had a bad day. Can we not get into it? Chance said, fighting back a wave of emotion. The feeling of that little girl in his arms. Please? There was a moment of silence. The display spun, happy animals dancing in pantomime circles. Okay, Hannah said, leaning into him. Chance reached down into the crib, tracing the twisted deformity of his son's spine with one finger. Helplessness rose in his chest. They'd never have enough money for the surgery. He, fought, he swallowed back the lump in his throat. He needs his sleep, Hannah said. You do too. Rinse off and come to bed. Hannah gave him a pat as she turned and slipped from the room. Yeah, Chance said at length, the sound of his voice exhausted and full of worry. After a few moments staring at his son, he forced himself away from the crib, moving with lethargic strides from the soft, spinning lights of the baby's room. And there you have it, folks. There's your reading of The Zone. It is currently being pitched to publishers hopefully with a 2022 release. If you'd like to find out more about me and what I'm into, you can check out stewjonesfiction.com or follow me at stewjonesfiction on social media. Happy Cyberpunk Day!